Hi friends. Hi friends. Hi friends. I, uh, I don't think that was any coincidence to any of you. Kevin, I'm going to stand in front and let you put, fix this up for a minute. So, uh, do the math, so to speak. Okay, so our final speaker today, uh, there's a lot I can say about Elaine, but I'll say this. Since we last saw her, she has become an author and is the founder of the wildly popular YouTube program and ministry, uh, JW Escape, where, as we heard earlier, some 100,000 people watch in monthly. Elaine goes meticulously through each and every Watchtower study on her program, offering biblical answers. She is watched by thousands. We are blessed to have her with us today. Elaine was a second generation Jehovah's Witness who lost her family and friends more than 30 years ago when she willingly disassociated herself. And I think probably next to Perry, nobody um, has, has suffered more the loss of family. And after crying out to God to reveal himself, she embarked on a journey to find the truth. Through the power of God's word, she experienced a radical life transformation and has traveled the world telling her story. Elaine is in the process of obtaining a 501c3 nonprofit called JW State Ministries, whereby she and her team can partner with willing churches to welcome former witnesses looking for a church home thus closing the gap of false doctrine. I like to call her a fireball for Jesus. Her talk today is entitled, The Watchtower's Dangerous Conditions. Let's welcome Elaine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Boy, did I struggle getting this headset on. I don't know what that was all about. So thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here um, for the second year in a row talking to everybody. And, you know, I had what I was going to say all figured out. I was going to give you, tell you a little bit about myself and then go into some slides and tell you about Watchtower's dangerous conditions. But I got very moved with Rachel's song, playing the singing song of her mother earlier. And I thought, oh no, here we go. Became very moved. And then, of course, I'm following. Martha's testimony again. I'd love to put in a request next year to go after Martha because I always follow her and or go before Martha and I just was very, very moved and I just felt that it was just very important to tell everybody why we are here. What do we do these witnesses now for Jesus conferences? Why I'm here is because these people, listen, Jehovah's Witnesses themselves my family members, they're wonderful people, they're great morals, they, they want to serve God, for the most part they're looking to serve God, but they're on the wrong path. And in doing so, they're victims and they become slaves for an organization that's posing as a religion. And they are why we're here. Because we want them to understand they're not alone. That they can get out of this organization, and even though they risk losing everybody and everything, we're here for them. If somebody's watching and you're in that position, we're here for you. We want to help you. Because when you get out of the Jehovah's Witness organization, not only do you lose your family, your friends, your job, everything you have, but you lose your worldview. You no longer have the Jehovah's Witness a belief system that enslaved you. So what do you do? A lot of them, they turn their back on God because the God that they knew was an evil God. And that's why we're here. We're here to just let everybody know we, we care for you, we love you, and uh, we want to share truth with you. So my story is I... Uh, uh, was a born in Jehovah's Witness. Um, I think um, Don said earlier when you were referring to the born ins, we are, or maybe it was um, Brian, I don't remember, but 
I was born in the second generation. I didn't have a choice about my belief system. My, um, I was, uh, I was a Jehovah's Witness because that's all I knew. I didn't have an opportunity to think for myself and choose my own religion. So I spent more than two decades in this organization and for 10 years of the, those two decades, more than two decades, I wanted out. From the age of about, I would say, 13 years old, I wanted out, but there was no way out. And it took me 10 years to get the courage to get out of this organization. And when I finally did, I walked out and basically never saw those people again. I saw my family members sporadically for business purposes, um, maybe at a funeral, but um, never saw them again. I never saw my friends again. And um, it's kind of funny because when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I had one worldly friend. Really wasn't allowed to hang out with her, but I did. And guess what? She's still in my life today. She's here today. I don't have the old Jehovah's Witnesses friends, but I do have that worldly friend. And, and she came um, to, to be in the audience with me today. So thank you so much. So anyway, I get out of this organization, and for the next 15 years, I live a life of defeat because I still believed the lies that I was unworthy uh, of God's love, that um, I was going to amount to nothing, that I was going to die at Armageddon, that, there, that God didn't love me. So one day, after 15 years, I decided to research my religion. And for three months, I went on this journey. I tell you, 17 hours a day, that's all I did was research my religion. I had these notebooks full of information. And when all the pieces of the puzzle fit together, I scared myself half to death because I saw a picture of evil that I never knew existed. And I thought I took it too far. But then I realized that, wait a minute, I went to church, we called it the Kingdom Hall, three times a week for, for more than two decades but I was serving false God, so who is God? I wanted to know who God was. I cried out to God on my face and begged him to reveal himself to me, and he did. He revealed himself to me in a way that um, I, I knew something was happening, but I didn't know what was happening. But what I can tell you, I didn't realize at the time was that all of the fear and terror and anger and animosity and anxiety that I had living inside of me fled and it was filled with peace and those feelings never returned. And when I realized that I was not serving God, that I was serving a false God, I started to pray for the people who were still in. And I prayed for 15 years. Because you see, God took me on a journey of truth. When I found, when I found him and I cried out to him, he led me to the Bible and I read that Bible from beginning to end in three months. And I haven't put it down. For 15 years he took me on this journey of learning about him. And for 15 years, I prayed for those still in the Jehovah's Witness organization. And my prayers went like this. When, God, when, when are the Jehovah's Witnesses going to be able to see you? When is there going to be a crack in the armor of this organization that has this, that them in this vice grip of slavery? And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And... And one day, I watched the Australian Royal Commission. Just a little food, you know, just a little fact there. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about Watchtower's dangerous conditions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to some of the recent wa uh, Watchtower study articles that I've read about. Basically, what I do on my channel is among other things, is the Jehovah's Witnesses study their Watchtower magazines every Sunday, most of the time it's on a Sunday. And it's an hour study. And what I do 
is I take that study article and I expose it for the lies that it is. I use their own material to expose them with the truth from scripture. My goal is for the Jehovah's Witness who is getting out to not live a life of defeat for 15 years like I did because when they lose that worldview, at least give God a chance. They were serving a false God and 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 instead of turning your back on the true God, at least find out who he is and that's what I do on my channel. So. I want to show you some of the things that the Watchtower organization teaches. So this is a, a recent Watchtower, January 2022, uh, page 31, make the youth best use of their time, of your time, is the name of the article. So here's what they say, if you make the best use of your time now, Jehovah will reward you with life forever in God's new world. Well, that's a lie. That is a lie. Romans 10, 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Where, where is the works in that? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's, it's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Jehovah's Witnesses are working out their salvation. And works will get us nowhere. What's going to happen is when they bow before Christ, and they say, did we do all these things in your name? Verse 23 says, Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me with that working that way. The Jehovah's Witness knows this verse very, very well. And what they don't realize is because they're trying to work out their own salvation, they're trying to be good enough to enter the presence of a holy God, will get them nothing. So this the December 2021 Watchtower. Under the title, We Must Be Holy, it says on page three, in other words, we will be considered holy if we're morally clean, if we worship Jehovah acceptably, and if we have a close personal relationship with him. But that's not what the Bible says how a person can be holy. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, that, don't you know that uh, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And it, and it goes on to say, don't be deceived because fornicators, idolaters, drunkards, revilers, the kingdom of God. But listen, verse 11, and such were some of you, but what? We were washed, sanctified, justified in the name of Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You see, Jesus paid the price for us. It's not us trying to be good enough. It's not what we could do. It's what Jesus already did for us. Christians are holy. The, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We don't work for it, friends. So I just wanted to show you another, another one. December 2021 Watchtower. If you regularly set aside time to focus on spiritual matters. You will develop a warm personal relationship with Jehovah. Let me tell you about who Christians are and what Christians are, not because of what they do, but because of what Christ did for, for them. Romans 8 says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children were heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, joint heirs with the King, friends, because of what Christ did for us. So um, Christians are children of God and joint heirs with the King. Jehovah's Witnesses never heard of this. Jehovah's Witnesses are trying to rearrange their schedule so that they can work and work and work out their salvation. So here's another one. 
the December 2021 Watchtower under Do You Remember? Now listen, these are the articles that Jehovah's Witnesses are studying every single week, okay? It says, Jehovah sees our efforts and he is pleased if we do not tire out or give up. If we do not tire out or give up, we will gain everlasting life. That's a lie. Romans 10, 9. Confess the Lord with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Shout and believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. This is how you get saved. It's through Christ. It's not through an organization. It's not through working and rearranging your schedule and trying to be good enough. It's not about gaining everlasting life because you can know that you have everlasting life. Titus 3, 4, and 6. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. They're working and working, and it's not about working for righteousness. Works will not save us at all, friends. All right, the November 2021 Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses are told that God promises that if we follow his instruction, which of course means the instruction of the governing body, okay, the instruction of the organization, even though they say to obey them, even if it doesn't sound um, right from a human standpoint, they are to obey. They have go bags packed by their car. They believe they're under attack. They're waiting for this phone call in the middle of the night to come for them to flee to some unknown destination. They don't know when the call is coming. They don't know who will be making the call. They don't know why the call will be coming. They don't know where they will be going, but the go bag is packed trying to work out their salvation. So this article says God promises that if we follow his instructions or these instructions, even if they don't appear to be sound, that we will not only enjoy, enjoy a happy life now, but also have the opportunity to live forever. 1 John 5.13 says that we may know we have eternal life. Isn't that so comforting then to wonder? Do you know what it's like to have a desire to not go to church, not go to the kingdom hall so strong, but you know you can't because you're in an end times cult? And if Armageddon comes when you're not really sick and you're staying home, you're going to be destroyed? You know what it's like to have a thought that's not according to their rules. And if when you have that thought, Armageddon comes, you're going to be destroyed. This is the life of a Jehovah's Witness. This is the mind of a Jehovah's Witness, not preparing for your future. You're trying to work out your salvation. That destruction and annihilation is always in the back of your minds. The literature is filled with this. But 1 John 5 says that you can know that you have eternal life when you believe on the name of the Son of God. And verse 14 says, and this is the confidence. Jehovah's Witnesses have no confidences, no confidence at all. Even when they're told that Jehovah is going to guarantee something, there's always a condition to it. We'll get into some of those. All right, so January 2022, Watchtower, under why we attend the memorial. All right, let me just read this to you. They also, so, okay, I'm just trying to think about where I even need to start with, with this memorial. I started to talk about it in the panel earlier. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that there's two classes, the sheep, the other sheep, and then the anointed. The anointed are the only ones going to heaven. The other sheep will be, they have, a, they have an earthly hope. They believe they're going, they're going to live forever on a paradise, utopian paradise earth. The anointed are going to go to, to heaven and rule in heaven. So the other sheep 
the ones with the earthly hope, it says regarding them, they also help make all the necessary arrangements so that the memorial, I'll explain this, can be held in every congregation worldwide, even though most congregations do not have any partakers in attendance. So let me stop here and explain. The memorial is a mandatory celebration that the Jehovah's Witnesses have. They celebrate the death of Christ. They don't, they don't celebrate birthdays or holidays or, or anything like that, but they celebrate the memorial. So if you're in the hospital, if you're sick, and you cannot attend the memorial, they bring the bread and the wine to you at the hospital, hospital, because it's required. And how this memorial goes on the night Jesus died is the elder sits up at the platform and he reads from Corinthians where Jesus took the bread, broke the, the bread, and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Then they pass the bread and the wine and every Jehovah's Witness, baptized Jehovah's Witness, is required to touch it, but then reject it. They refuse to partake. They told that they are told that it's not for them. They're not worthy of that. It's only for a select few. But that's not what the Bible says. All right. Then they do the same thing with the wine, and then they toss them in the trash. One of my viewers said, well, no, the elders actually go in the back and they drink the wine, and maybe they do. I don't know. So that's what this is talking about. They're saying that the other sheep, these with the earthly hope, help the anointed, uh, e uh, even though most of them do not partake. So it also goes on to say, and Jesus views what they do for his anointed brothers as if they were doing it for him personally. These men, the governing body members, believe that they're Christ's brothers. And what they're actually doing is they're actually creating martyrs. Jehovah's Witnesses, the word witness in Greek, martyrs, Jehovah's martyrs. They believe you can find this in their literature back in the 50s. You have to know what to look for. The average Jehovah's Witness does not know this, but... The more martyrs die on their behalf, the higher they will ascend to heaven. So they have a no blood policy where they don't take blood transfusions. And people, they're dying. Jehovah's Witnesses are dying. They're dying of their no blood by not taking blood transfusions. They're dying because they have a belief system of self-atonement. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that their sins are canceled out at death. So if they die before Armageddon, their sins are canceled out, and they get res resurrected for a second chance in this utopian paradise. But if they continue living and they don't make it through Armageddon, then at least the teaching was that they're annihilated. They, they're annihilationists, and they're not resurrected. It may have changed. I don't know. They're, they, they're constantly getting new light. So the suicide rate of Jehovah's Witnesses is very high because people think this, I can't be good enough. You know, I'm not good enough. I, I just can't do this anymore. So I know I'm going to die at Armageddon. I can't do it. So they, they kill themselves. They, they kill one woman in Michigan, killed her two teenage kids when they came in the door. I believe her husband, the dog and herself and the, basically said, you know, this is the only way we could make it, the only way. So I, I have a lot of viewers on my YouTube channel and I, I, got a, um, I got a suicide note. A woman got out, she lost everybody like, like we all do and she couldn't take it, she watched my videos I don't know what else she did, if she contacted, if there was another suicide note, but she sent the suicide note to me. And there's no reaching this woman. So this is the plight of the Jehovah's Witness. They shatter their minds. They terrify them. And then they fill it with these lies, this propaganda. Could you imagine what it's like 
constantly looking over your shoulder. Am I doing something wrong? I don't know. What if somebody sees me? What if somebody turns me in? What if uh, I, I get disfellowshipped, kicked out? What if I'm standing in line for a movie, but the R-rated line is here, and uh, am I standing too close to the R-rated mine? Because what if somebody sees me standing in line for this movie, and they think I'm in the R-rated line, and they tell on me, and how do I prove? And You know, you could get in, tru in trouble for anything being a Jehovah's Witness. There's no peace ever. So what I was saying earlier on the panel is that uh, on, on April 1st, they're opening up the Kingdom Halls. They had them closed for two years for COVID. And, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of the things that comes out because this is what I do on my channel. And I had noticed that one of the leaders made the comment, wouldn't it be nice if we opened up the Kingdom Halls in time for the, memor for the memorial? And I thought, oh man are they really going to do that and then on their website they said oh announcement we're opening up the kingdom halls just in time for the memorial so do you see what they're doing they're opening the halls so that everybody could be invited because they have this massive campaign where they invite everybody so that thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of people can witness them rejecting the Savior who died for the sins of mankind. That's what this cult is all about. So whether they'll keep the Kingdom Halls open after the memorial, I don't know. But isn't that something? Just in time. So I want to show you what partaking of the bread and the wine is all about. Okay? Matthew 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. His broken body. His body broke so I could live, okay? His body broke so you could live. Verse 27. And he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink ye, meaning all of you, all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for just a few. Is that what it says? For only the anointed? It was shed for many for the remission of sins, not just for a few. Hebrews 13. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Hebrews 9.28 says, many and unto them that look for him shall he appear Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus returned invisibly okay shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation one more 2nd Corinthians 5 14 for the love of Christ constrains us, constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for how many all then we're all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves verse 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature all things have passed away behold things are, all things are become new and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given us to us the ministry of reconciliation To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto him. Okay? Because Christ was made sin for us. So look, let me show you something. God didn't just die for these men, or Christ did not just die for these men. This is the governing body members. And what, what's happened with JW Broadcasting, now we know who these men are because they're on their website. And um, I think many Jehovah's Witnesses are waking up because they're realizing, really? We never knew who these men were over the years, but this batch of governing body members, they're known. We see them, we see their interactions and their mannerisms and all of that, and many are waking up. But they believe they teach that these are the ones 
who are worthy to partake, everybody else is unworthy to partake. So let's just move along. We're almost finished here. January 22, Watchtower. If our main concern is to stay loyal to Jehovah and to vindicate his name, he will answer our, answer our prayers for help. But Jesus is the one who calls us his sheep. Jesus is the one who gives us eternal life. And the Father, some, you know what, I don't have my notes here, so I look at these slides and I'm like, well, why did I put this slide here? Uh, God, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, not just a select few. Salvation is available to all of us, and it has nothing to do with us being good. Has nothing, we could never be good enough to enter the presence of a holy God, friends. It's all about what the Savior did for us. All right, let, let me look, let me read you this one. It's talking about adjusting our schedule because Jehovah's Witnesses are all about counting time. When they're knocking on doors or writing letters, they're counting time. They have to get in so many hours to remain active. And now it's changed so much that they've gotten rid of the hour requirement. And I think you only need to do 15 minutes or something like that to be considered active. That just shows you their desperation in keeping their numbers up. So this article says that uh, we should be willing to adjust our schedule to preach when we are more likely to meet people. If we do, we can be sure that Jehovah will be pleased. So God is going to be pleased if we adjust our schedule to preach more. But let me show you this. Isaiah 64, God says, we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Do you understand that? God says, we, you could, you're mere man, and you live in a fallen world, and you could be, never be good enough to enter my presence. So you know what I did? I did it for you. I did the work for you, and I paid the price and all you have to do is accept it. It's a free gift. That takes the pressure off, doesn't it? Here we go. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Could you imagine the Jehovah's Witness standing before Christ or bowing before Christ because every knee will bow before Christ and say, I adjusted my schedule, I wrote letters, I made phone calls, I pioneered, I went out in service, I did so many return visits, I placed so many magazines and books and tracts, and I did so many Bible studies. What is God going to say? You're boasting. It's filthy rags. I paid the price, and you didn't even see it. You denied me, and you rejected me. And this is why we do these conferences. This is why I have my YouTube channel, is to give the Jehovah's Witness, the ex-Jehovah's Witness, the chance to say, listen, I was deceived. What is truth? This is truth. It's a free grit. It's a free gift. You don't need extra biblical uh, publications that that they that's why they they publish their own publications is because their doctrine is found in the publications it's not found in the Word of God so I want to show you something really quickly Al um, gave this to me when I walked in he says Elaine I have something for you this is a, a book you know what I never saw this book it's it's called the Bible in living English I think any Jehovah's Witness can spot a JW publication from across the room um, but this was published by the Watchtower Corporation it's not a religion um, here it is Although I'm going to need my glasses for this because I can't see. It was 1972, Watchtower Bible Tract Society, Pennsylvania. 225,000 copies as of 1981, which is not many for their publications. And so Al just gave this to me, and I just wanted to show you something. 
I'm going to read you something. John 1, 1. Okay? At the first, there was the Word, and the Word was where God was, and the Word was God. The Word was God. Jehovah's Witnesses don't even know what they believe. In the Jehovah's Witness Bible, they say Jesus was a God. And I always say, well, if the Old Testament says there's only one God, but you're saying John 1, 1 says Jesus was a God, then which one is the false God? Well, right. guess what? It's the Jehovah of the Watchtower Corporation. So, Jesus, let, let's see if I could just pull this out of thin air. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Colossians 1, 16, Jesus is the creator. Right. So Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens of the earth and the earth. Colossians 1, 16, Jesus is the creator. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, John 1, 1, in the beginning, Revelation 1, no, 1, 1, 8, or 1, 18, 1, 6, um, Jesus says, I am the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. It's, it's not hard, you guys. Watchtower made it so hard so that they could fill our minds with their false belief system, which puts us on the road to destruction. Take the time to find out who Jesus truly is and accept that free gift. It's there you will have eternal life according to scripture. Thanks so much.